Hello students, today we will be learning about the quantum numbers. Basically, these quantum numbers are defined as those numbers which tells us about the energy, position and the orientation of an electron present in an atom. So, with the help of these quantum numbers, by knowing the value of all the given quantum numbers, we can judge that what is the position of any electron in an atom, what will be the shell, subshell, orbital of this electron present in a particular atom so we can understand the independent uh, understand the usefulness or the utility of these quantum number by taking a simple example like if i am to locate if i am to identify the position of any person in this universe then the very first thing if it is told to me that the person belongs from india so this in uh, this knowledge about the locality of the person is not enough sufficient as we know india is a very big country and just by knowing this that a person belongs from india it is not easy or it is quite impossible to find the person so to help this if further it is said that in india the person belongs from japur then again the information is not sufficient since japur japur it's quite big city and it's very difficult to find out a person only by the name and by only by knowing the name and by knowing the city of the person so to know the exact locality of the person here we need to know that in Jaipur from where it belongs to what is the road number of the uh, what is the road number of the home of that person and what is the house number for that person so by knowing these four things that the person belongs from this city this country this city and the locality by road number and house number we can exactly locify the person locate locate the presence of that person in the particular country same as if we are to identify the position of any electron present in an atom then the very first thing we need to know that the that the electron belongs from which shell if we came to know that the electron belongs from this shell then further we need to know that what is the subshell for this electron then the further things a subshell contains number of orbitals so to so to give the exact position of that electron now we need to know about the orbital of that electron and finally when we came to know that what is the orbital of this electron the next thing that we need to know is the orientation or the spin of this electron that whether this is moving in the clockwise clockwise direction or it is moving in the anti-clockwise direction so by knowing these four things that this electron belongs from this particular shell this particular subshell orbital and spin finally we will come to know that what is the position of this electron present in a particular atom and the numbers which tells us about the shell subshell orbital and the spin of this electron are termed as quantum numbers so as we need to know the four things about the position of any electron in an atom that is why there are total four quantum numbers and here we will be learning about these quantum numbers the very first quantum number which tells us about the shell of this atom is termed as principal quantum number Well, the next quantum number which indicates that what is the subshell of this atom is termed as azimuthal quantum number. Now, if we move to the, if we move to know the orbital of this electron, then the information about the orbital is given by the next number and this next number is termed as magnetic quantum number. Now, if a atom, if an electron belongs from a particular orbital, it can sh it can show the movement in the clockwise direction or it can rotate in the anti-clockwise direction. So this is told as by the spin quantum number, and that is the fourth and the last quantum number. So basically, these are the four types of quantum numbers, and here we will be learning about these four quantum numbers in details. So the very first, we will be starting with the principal quantum number. This principal quantum number was very first introduced by Niels Bohr in his atomic model. So the credit for the introduction is given to Niels Bohr. Now to denote this principal quantum number in short, short we can use the symbol N. So this is the, so, small, uh, this is the short identification 
indication of this principal quantum number is it in, it is indicated by this kind of symbol if we talk about the range of this principal quantum number that what is what can be the minimum value of this principal quantum number and what is the maximum value for this then the range for this principal quantum number is from 1 to infinite the minimum value for this principal quantum number is 1 while the maximum value is infinite now this principal quantum number helps us to identify the name the size and the energy of any shell from which this atom belongs to so that is the significance of this principal quantum number that it represents like here we start here we start with the name of the shell that how with the help of this principal quantum number we can come to know the name of that shell like if i start by taking the minimum value of this principal quantum number that is n is equals to 1 then this shell will be the nearmost shell to the nucleus for this atom and and this shell is designated by the symbol k now if i talk about the next shell to this k that is indicated by the value of n2 and it is designated by the symbol l if we move to the next one the value of n will be 3 here and the symbol for this principal quantum number will be m here same as if we move to the next shell the value of n that is principal quantum number it will be 4 designated by the symbol n same as further on if we move in the alphabetical order the next alphabetical order will be o and it will be the principal quantum number for this will be 5 same as we can move further the value of n is equals to 6 will indicate the next quantum number indicated by the symbol p and further on we can move in the same manner so here we can see that with the help of this principal quantum number we can come to know that what will be the name of this shell now move to the size of the shell that how with the help of this principal quantum number we can come to know the size of this shell now if we talk about the radius of this k l m n o and so on then it is found in the increasing order like the radius of the very first shell that is k shell it has the least value compared to the all another shells that is radius of second shell radius of third shell that is m shell then radius of fourth shell and by this it is found in the increasing order so that is about the size of these shell now if it if i talk about the energy of these shells then it is again found in find in the increasing order as we move far away from the nucleus like if I talk about the energy of first shell that is K shell, it is found least compared to all another shells and the increasing order is given like this. E3, greater energy shown by E4 and so on. So this that is about the name, size and energy of any shell and this thing we can judge if we have the idea about the value of principal quantum number. The next utility of this principal quantum number is that with the help of this principal quantum number we can come to know that how many maximum number of electrons in a particular shell will be. Like if the value of n is there for, for a particular shell for this belonging from this particular shell the maximum number of electrons can be given by the formula 2n square. For example, if I talk about the k shell, the value of n for the shell is 1 and by putting the value in the formula 2n square, we can find out the maximum number of electrons. It will be 2 into square of 1 and the maximum of 2 electrons it can accommodate. Same as if I talk about the L shell, the value of n is equals to 2 and the maximum number of electrons will be 2 into square of 2, the value will be 8. Next shell, if I talk about the M shell, the value of N is equals to 3 here. To calculate the maximum number of electrons, we will put the value. It's, it will be 2 into square of 3. The value will be 18. So, in the same manner, we can calculate the maximum number of electrons for any shell by the formula 2N square. Now, the next utility of this principal quantum number is... And the utility is, as we have seen last time in the Bose atomic model, that the electron can revolve only in that particular orbital where the magnet, where the angular momentum of this electron is equals to n h divided by 2 pi. So, there this n value is decided by the principal quantum number. 
As we know that the permissible orbital for any electron is given by the formula mvr is equals to nh divided by 2 pi, there this value of n is given by the number principal quantum number. If we are talking about the L shell, there the value of n will be 2. So there in the Bohr's atomic model, the postulates of Bohr atomic model, here we can use this value of n here. So that is about the principal quantum number. Now we will move to the next quantum number that is termed as azimuthal quantum number. This azimuthal quantum number is also termed to known as sometimes with the name secondary quantum number. Also, it can be termed as subsidiary quantum number. Yeah, uh, or one name can or one name can also be given for this subsidiary quantum number. It is sometimes with the known with the name orbital angular momentum quantum number. So that are the four names for this azimuthal quantum number and it can be asked with any of these names. Now if I move for this properties for this azimuthal quantum number then the indication for this azimuthal quantum number is given by the symbol small l. It is indicated by this kind of this kind of azimuthal this kind of symbol. Now if I talk about this azimuthal quantum number that who introduced this quantum number first? Then this azimuthal quantum number was introduced by Somer Field and he introduced this quantum number in his atomic model that is known as Somer Field's atomic atomic model. Now the next thing that the range for this azimuthal quantum number, what will be the minimum value and what will be the maximum value for this, then the range of this azimuthal quantum number, it depends on the principal quantum number. As it is the secondary quantum number, so the value of this secondary quantum number is decided by the principal quantum number. And for a given value of principal quantum number that is indicated by n, the value of l may be well, the value of L is from 0 to N minus 1. So that's the next property about the range. Like if I talk about the very first shell with the principal quantum number N is equals to 1. So if the value of n is equals to 1, the shell indicated by this principal quantum number is k shell. And here we will be talking about that the, what will be the value of L for the belonging from this shell. As we know that the value of L is from 0 to n minus 1. So by putting the value, here we will, here we will be finding only one value for this azimuthal quantum number and that is 0. Same as if I talk about the next shell that is indicated by the principal quantum number 2, the symbol or the designation for this shell is L and the value of L for this shell will be 0 to n minus 1 that is 0 and 1. So two values of L is possible for this shell. Now if I move to the next shell that is third shell designated by the symbol M, the possible values of L will be 0, 1 and 2. For the next shell, n shell, the value of n since it is 4, the maximum value of L will be 4 and the values will be 0, 1, 2 and it is 4 minus 1 that is 3. So 4 maximum values are possible for this. Here we can see that since the principal quantum number is 1, the value that is possible for this L is only 1. Only one value of L is possible. Since the principal quantum number is 2 here, only two values of this azimuthal quantum numbers are possible. And as the value of principal quantum number is 3, only three possible values of azimuthal quantum numbers are there. So here we can conclude that the maximum value of L will be all the so here we can conclude that the maximum possible values of l is equal to the principal quantum number and if i talk about the value that what is the maximum value of this l it will be always lesser than the principal quantum number like here we can see that this principal quantum number here it is 3 and the maximum value of this 
Azimuthal quantum number is 2. It is lesser than this principal quantum number. Same as if I talk about the principal quantum number with the value of n4, the maximum value of this L may be possible 3. And this is the reason we can we can never we can always say that the maximum value of L is always less than the value of n. So here I am going to write the conclusion from this from these values. And the next conclusion is total values of L it is equals to the principal quantum number. Like here 4 values of L are possible and that is equals to the principal quantum number that is 4 here. Now here each value of L as we have talked initially that here each value of this azimuthal quantum number indicates one subshell and the subshell that is designated by the value of L is equals to 0 as we have seen that the minimum possible value of this L is 0. The subshell that is indicated by this value is designated is termed as S subshell and designated by this small s symbol. Same as if I talk about the next subshell that is indicated by the value of the azimuthal quantum number as 1, the subshell will be P subshell designated by this kind of symbol. The next subshell having the value of azimuthal quantum number as 2, this subshell will be D subshell and the next subshell designated by the value of L is equals to 3, this will be F subshell. So here we can see that this K shell has only one value of L, so it contains only one subshell that is S subshell. This L, sub L shell has two values of L that is 0 and 1. 0 indicates the presence of S subshell and 1 indicates the presence of P subshell. So this L shell contains two subshells that is the principal quantum number of this also. Same as if I talk about the M shell, it contains three values of L. 0 indicates the presence of S subshell, 1 indicates the presence of P subshell and 2 indicates the presence of D subshell. So total number of subshells present in this shell is S, P, D. The total number of subshells are 3 and this 3 is equal to principal quantum number of this. Same as the N shell, it will be containing S subshell indicated by the value 0. At the value of L is equals to 1, it indicates the presence of P subshell. 2, it indicates the presence of D subshell. And 3, it indicates the presence of F subshell. So where when we have concluded the total possible values of L, we can also write this in short like the number of shells, number of subshells present in a shell will be equals to the principal quantum number. Principal quantum number of that shell. As we have seen that if the principal quantum number is 4, it will be containing only 4 number of subshells and the subshells are S, P, D and F subshell. Now if I talk about that why we are designating these subshells by the symbol S, P, D and F only. Why we are not using any other alphabets? So basically these four alphabets indicates the starting letter of four words and the words are S, it indicates the word sharp. This P, it's the starting alphabet of the word principal. D, it indicates diffused. And F, it indicates fundamental. So these are the four words and the starting alphabets of four words for of these four words work as the designation designated symbols for four subshells. So that is about the four subshells. Now if we talk about the energy of these subshells. So here we have seen that four subshells are present in a shell and the energy of these subshells is in the increasing order like S belong from a particular shell will be having least energy compared to P shell, P subshell, D subshell and F subshell. So that is the order of energy for these shells. And these sh subshells should be belonging from a particular fixed shell. 
means we cannot compare here we are not going to compare his the very first one as subshell one indicates the k shell s indicates the subshell so it is the subshell of s subshell of first shell we are not going to compare this with the fourth shell containing p subshell so this kind of comparison we are not going to do here we are only going to compare the subshells of particular shell like if we compare this if we compare that the fourth shell contains s subshell is all it also contains p subshell it also contains d as well as f subshell when we compare the energy of these subshells belonging from a particular shell the energy will be in, in the increasing order like this so that is about the order of energy now if i talk about the maximum number of orbitals that belong from a particular shell so as we know that this subshell will be containing number of orbitals and how many number of orbitals will be present in a particular subshell that can also be calculated with the help of azimuthal quantum number and that is given by maximum number of orbitals it is given by the formula 2l plus 1 like if the value of l is equals to 1 here and we are talking about s so this s subshell by putting the value of l is equals to 0 here we will be getting the value of maximum number of orbitals for this subshell it will be 1 only now if i talk about l is equals to 1 this l is equals to 1 indicates that we are talking about p subshell and the maximum number of orbitals that are present in this p subshell can be calculated by the formula 2l plus 1 here the value of l is equals to 1 plus 1 the value total values are 3 and it indicates that this p subshell contains total 3 electrons so that is about the counting of maximum number of orbitals if we go for the maximum number of electrons that how many maximum number of electrons are contained by any subshell so it is given or it is calculated by the formula 2 into 12 plus 1 like here if i am to count the maximum number of electrons for f subshell so this f subshell will be containing maximum number of electron as 2 into 2l here the value of l is equals to 3 for this f subshell the given value will be 2 multiplied with 3 plus 1 and this on calculation will give us the value 14 so this f subshell can be can contain maximum number of 14 electrons and this maximum number of electrons present in a particular subshell as we have seen it can be calculated by this formula so that is about the azimuthal quantum number next time we will be dealing with the rest two quantum numbers that are magnetic quantum numbers and spin quantum numbers